call to order the Monday, May 16th, 2016 meeting of the Arlington Development Board, recorded by ACMI. First on our agenda this evening is uh, a certificate of completion for the Brightview Assisted Living Project, and Joshua Davis is here to make that request. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, relates to a special permit that you all issued in 2012 for the assisted living facility at um, the old Sims Hospital site. Um, and my client neglected to ask for a certificate of completion at the same time that they got the final certificate of occupancy. Uh, this is sort of a, as some of you may recall, this is um, a parallel process because of the land disposition agreement and the urban renewal, um, um, uh, the fact that it was an urban renewal project. So the certificate is um, uh, simply indicating that the, uh, the improvements have been constructed. It's not saying that everything else under the land disposition agreement, but a lot of requirements have been fulfilled. Those are mostly ongoing. So the request tonight is to uh, ask the board to uh, um, have the chairman um, sign it, notarize it, so that we can record it and satisfy uh, Brightview's lender that everything is a-okay. Happy to answer any questions. Yeah, any questions from the board? Wait till that's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe Laura checked to make sure. Did you? Did you do a drive by? Did you do a drive by? About a year ago. <laughs> I will just add that I did speak to both inspectional services and the town engineer's office, and both of them said that there were no outstanding issues related to the project. Excellent. <clears throat> I had nothing better to do, so I drafted a motion if you want it. <laughs> sure. Grab it. Without Bruce here, we need someone to do it. So. Uh, no, let me just read it first and then <laughs> make sure I agree. I move that we vote to approve and issue a certificate of completion under the land disposition agreement dated as of August 25th, 2004, between the board and Sims Redevelopment Associates LLC as amended to Brightview Arlington LLC as owner of the assisted living land described in the agreement in the form submitted and to authorize the chair to execute acknowledge before a notary and deliver the certificate on behalf of the board. Um, and actually, I would say land disposition agreement dated as of August 25th, 2004, as amended. Uh, between oh, I'm sorry, there it is. Got it. Never mind. Second. Okay. Motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. Enjoy town meeting. Those of you who are coming. Thank Call in a couple days. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll let you know as soon as I get that. All right, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Now, moving on, recap of town meeting and next steps. Jenny. So I thought we could spend a little bit of time just sort of reviewing everything that happened at town meeting with the zone, zoning warrant articles. The last time you met, you had a brief discussion or celebration of articles six and seven. And so we, you know, after that point in time was then all of the residential zoning warrant articles. So I wanted to just give you some air time to talk about that and if you wanted to and also then talk about what are the next steps for moving forward, um, which include responding to the Article 11 motion. And um, on, along those lines, what I wanted to share with you is uh, beginning work with Adam Chapdelaine, the town manager, to uh, devise what will be sort of a recodification committee that would be in relation to the Master Plan Implementation Committee, and then also a subcommittee that would be looking at residential issues. That's the sort of beginning thinking. Um, further fleshed out once we get to the Master Plan Implementation Committee meeting on May 26th. Um, so that's, that's kind of just the, the timeline of things, but we're still working out details and understanding um, a little bit more about what that Article 11 motion says, making sure we're responsive to it, and also making sure that we're responsive to the recommendations that were in the Master Plan, which included a zoning audit and um, some very clear steps that we need to take in terms of 
sort of looking at the zoning, cleaning it up, and then also addressing, if we, if we can, some policy issues to align the master plan with our, the zoning with the master plan, rather. So, yeah. You, I wanted to just put this on the agenda so you had time to talk about it before the master plan implementation committee meeting. Yeah, so I, I think um, I think it was, uh, uh, you know, I, think I certainly felt that there was a lot of confusion in that type of uh, thing. And I think part of it was a little bit of, well, twofold. Number one is, is I think we were nibbling at the edges a little bit um, on what it was that we were trying to do and trying to explain it for one reason rather than the other uh, type of thing. And I think then we need to be kind of transparent about, and I think we always were. We always said that, you know, the... The, the gradation of the driveway would push back, you know, and that type of thing. But I think I think we kind of got to lay it all out a little bit. Uh, if that's the approach we want to take, then we need to lay it out a little more clearly. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the the other part that I guess I kind of am curious about is what folks in our position, kind of old land use type zoning and that type of thing. It, how other communities similar in nature to Arlington have gone about this kind of process and, and how, whether they've done it in a piecemeal fashion or whether they just kind of tried to rip off the Band-Aid with some rather large uh, recodification. So mm -hmm. I guess at this point, I don't have enough knowledge of it mm -hmm. to understand which way other communities have gone, what the you know, um, uh, pros and cons are of, of that type of thing. I think what we were trying to do was, you know, uh, uh, make some changes that could help move us along. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but part of me thinks maybe we're better off just kind of looking at it holistically and, and, and trying to figure out everything that we may want to do and mm -hmm. how we may want to do it. And, and I guess I'm just not into reinventing the wheel. I mean, there's got to be other communities that have been mm -hmm. in kind of a position with 40-year-old uh, um, zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, Forty plus year uh, zoning that you know that that when they did bring it up you know maybe it's form based maybe it's something else but mm -hmm. you know some some other ideas so yeah. and and then finally just kind of doing that soon mm -hmm. so that we can kind of get in front of it if we do want to do it for next year um, you know sadly it's just not as much time as you think in that in that whole time right. anyway so those are my thoughts after that after that whole thing. I can wait to respond um, if you all want to continue or respond. Yeah, no, I mean. I mean, so just one little tidbit is we did allocate $50,000 in community development block grant funds towards re free codification oh, really? and master planning. Okay, I didn't realize So we that. will have that um, to work with. Because that was always part of the problem is we didn't have those have funds. Have any funds. Yeah. So that'll be active July 1st. Hmm. And so the, the beginning of the process, and Laura, you can fill in the blanks if mm -hmm. I don't see anything. But, I, you know, the beginning of the process is kind of scoping it out. Right. What exactly do we want to do? What can we, what's feasible? What can some, you know, some of our staff be able to possibly work on or, you know, advance versus what do we need a consultant to help us with, which I think we, we definitely will need a consultant yeah. mm -hmm. to help us with this if we go down the path of wanting to recodify completely. Um, and then, you know, part of that is also kind of having a conversation about what are our goals. And I, I don't know that we've actually had that conversation, or, you know, maybe you had that conversation during the master plan yeah. process yeah. To, to an extent, but I think now it's time to revisit that specific. conversation and understand, specific. you know, what's what we must do and, you know, then versus the things we might have to live with. Um, you know, which is somewhat contingent upon fun funding, somewhat is contingent upon the timeline, and possibly other factors as well. Because I think I think a, a big part of confusion and the fact zoning is hard and everything else is the way it's currently set up, right? Like I said, we're kind of nipping at the edges here, mm -hmm. and no one understands if we change this, then this has to happen. Well, what does this actually mean? I live on a hill. Right. You know, there isn't this kind of. It's all. To me, it, it would almost be easier to explain a recodification complete, you know, completely because you don't end up with this Swiss cheese that we have over here. You know, of, of this parcel is this, this parcel is that, and everything mm -hmm. else. So, anyway. Yeah, the master plan, when RKG was doing the zoning audit, my understanding is based upon the conclusion of the audit, was to, you know, the, the town had a couple of choices. One is to completely recodify 
address the numerous districts that were in place right. um, and clean it up because there's a lot of language that's either outdated or not, does not align with you know, sort of current best practices um, or um, you know, do bits and pieces sort of right. along the way, which many communities do that because it takes, it's quite a process to recodify, but there right. are communities who if they have the, you know, the foresight and the, the will, you know, organize a group of people, like a, a larger committee of people, which includes, you know, a cross-section of ta uh, staff, um, various different boards and committees that deal with land use and zoning and policy issues, um, and, you know, may include other, you know, residents um, or business leaders, et cetera, depending upon what your, again, what the goals are of that process. Um, and, you know, you can get at it in the big way, cleaning everything up, get at it in little pieces, and then maybe you can also get to the policy issues. Yeah. And that means taking the visions and the goals and the strategies that are enumerated in the master plan and saying, well, how do we need to rezone in order to achieve these goals? Because a lot of them actually do require you know, zoning initiatives in order to advance them. So right now, the zoning doesn't match the master plan in a lot of ways. And I think that that's you know, <coughs> pointed out in various strategies. Um, yeah, I remember as we were passing the master plan a year ago, um, or talking about it, you know, one of the big things was to do that kind of, okay, if we went that direction, here are the changes that we would make, but we didn't have the money to do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wonder with this CDBG, how far it does get us. Um, do, do you remember that as well? Or, yeah. yeah. Or, um, it may clearly. not get us all the way through. Right, I, I'm sure it wouldn't, but, but, but it'd be nice to understand it. where it, where it would start and uh, how far it gets us, because mm -hmm. I think that's actually... Once again, I think that's more easily explainable than uh, mm -hmm. kind of nitpicking. Yeah. Nitpicking, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I think that comes back to kind of what are the goals of the project? You know, what, what do we ultimately want to achieve at the end? And then what can what's the scope of work to achieve that goal? And then once we get the scope, we can figure out what the what we think are some of the cost estimates to move forward. And then yeah. obviously go out to our, have an RFP to bring yeah. somebody on. The other. Uh, kind of cost factor would be uh, community engagement, which I think is, to me, the most illuminating part of town meeting is the need for a lot more community mm -hmm. engagement and across the town. Um, and that we want to be very deliberate about how we do that. And we want to be, um, you know, we, we need to be engaging very broadly because it's both an educational process as well as, you know, a, a process to tell people you know, the way that we do the zoning and the, the way that the process works in town. So I think that that's, and, and we want their input. You know, There's a piece, the master plan is completed, yes, but that doesn't mean that we never ask for input again on what we want, you know, what is the vision of the town? Right. And what do we want, how do we want to see things moving forward? So I think that's part of that process as well, is engaging people in that vision um, to get to some other end point. I think one of the toughest parts with that community engagement is, or two of the toughest parts, is, one is we see the same folks a lot, which is great. I mean, they're very active and everything else, but to get that next level is, is something else. Now, we've got enough press <laughs> that maybe it does bring, <clears throat> but the other part of zoning too is you get a very individualistic view of it, right? What, how is this gonna affect me and, and, and my property, which is totally understandable. But, you know, the civic engagement we're looking for is maybe a little bit broader. And uh, I think that's where, they, I think it is a challenge to try to figure out how you, how you navigate that, so. I think it's, sorry, go ahead. I think it's gonna be really difficult if we're gonna go and do a holistic zoning um, change to do it within a year. Mm -hmm. And with the funds we have, we have set aside, I, I see it as sort of um, three parts right now. I could be wrong, but the first part, just like, like you said, understanding um, what the what the mission is and what we're trying to do, and then establishing how we go about doing that. I mean, with who, with the outreach, community, everybody, business, the business people, the country, everybody, and then third thing is just drafting it so everybody understands it and putting it in such a way where it's, um, I, I, I just can't see that happening that soon. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have to ask ourselves the question is, do we say that we're going to do a, 
a big approach, and then we should let everybody know that with this big approach. It's going to be more than a year. Mm -hmm. Or are we going to say, no, we're going to keep to our, uh, our word saying we're going to look at this uh, over the next year and bring something up forth to the next town meeting. And then that's something that I think we have to sort of decide right now, yeah. or at least think about. Well, it. I, think, I think there's a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> and I can talk about this with the Master Plan Implementation Committee next week. Cause on that committee as well, um, but given <coughs> me, given the conversations that were had, given the turnover in town meeting and the turnover in town, this might be a good time to start to take a look at the master plan and begin that first review of where we are. Even though it was only approved a year ago, it really started. And I don't really remember how long ago it started, Laura. The, uh, it was about two and a half years before, yeah, before between we had a the first um, the World Cafe. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that. To mm -hmm. Uh, adoption. Yeah. It's two and a half years. And so now it's three and a half years. So it's probably time to start this summer at looking at what we want to accomplish there and work with them to maybe hold a forum or two, um, one specifically geared towards zoning, um, to find out what direction we should head in and how we should accomplish well, this. Who, who would be, uh, I'm not following. Sorry, a public would, forum. With just uh, town meeting something or like or the World Cafe. Every, something oh, like something the open to, to the general populace of the town um, to get ideas and, and start to head into this process. And we can put the option that there's a holistic review and doing an entire re recodification may be what's necessary. We can look at some other better crafted piecemeal um, changes, but I think that's where we probably should start with a rewrite. And policy changes, are you saying? I'm saying it, those are, are the options, mm -hmm. figuring right. out how we approach right. this so that right. we're doing it. And I don't know what the answer is. Yet. I don't know either, but yeah. we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Is the Master Plan Implementation Committee taking a look at, you know, what other communities have done in order to bring specifically, I guess, zoning as much as anything else into the 21st century, like what, you know, and it just, I do look at this and it just, it's, it's not intuitive, it's not easy, it's not, you know, um, it, it's gonna, it, it gets crushed under its own weight, um, and maybe that's the way it needs to be, but you don't, to, you don't need to have that many districts. Yeah, and, and I think, I think for me, like, I think simplification in order to, making sure that we understand the goals. But I think the goals were actually fairly well set up in the master plan mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what can be done from a simplification perspective, both from a, uh, you know, a, a synthesis, you were, you were talking about kind of going through and making sure it all gels, right? And I think that is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And then And then to say, okay, and then here are the things that we're trying to accomplish with respect to maybe sizing, with respect to a bunch of other things. Uh, how are communities addressing this from a best practice perspective? Uh, you know, I think I think part of that was missing from the conversation, mm -hmm. and you know, it, and and because it was missing, it it led to you know what seemed like very technical changes that would have big impacts that no one really understood. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I think one of the takeaways I had from this past year is that there are certain things that there's a lot of general agreement about. It was kind of remarkably easy to change the mixed use and the parking. I think everybody would agree that there's too many zoning districts. Those are, those won't be hard. Right. I don't know. But I, 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 I kind of disagree with you a little bit. Okay, because someone's going to have property in, in those scattered all of those districts there, and they're going to real they're going to want to realize how's this going to affect my value. You know, I. This is my biggest purchase, all my life savings are in this thing here, and all of a sudden it changes the zoning or or under the guise of we're simplifying zoning. Often they because they perceive they're losing value. That's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But that's gonna happen no matter what though. Maybe the game value. Well that's true, <laughs> but, yeah. but the game but, value. But they're gonna yeah. but that's gonna be a bottom that's gonna be quite a bit of a debate up the oh, I agree, that's but that's why you need to have, like, as, as your backup, what other communities have done. Like, why is this, like, the way to go? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I agree with you completely. 
and people will be affected. But that's why it's even more, and, and I think we saw that with this, uh, even in this year when we did it, right? I mean, that's what everyone said. And, but we couldn't, we couldn't really explain it well enough to say, yes, but here's why, you know, from a community as a whole, this is the right thing to do. You know, yes, people will be affected. We'll try to, you know, mitigate some of those effects, either with timing or something like that. But I agree with you, but I don't think we can avoid that fact. Uh, but I think that's why we need to kind of get our ducks in a row, is because people will be affected. And so if we don't have a good explanation of, of why and how and, you know, these communities did it and here is the result, you know, then I think, I think we're just going to end up with what we had this year, which was a lot of confusion. So, mm -hmm. so the point of this conversation was just to let, let you have some of your time to talk, kind of reflect on what occurred at town meeting and you know, the next steps moving forward, and also just to kind of get your feedback um, for things that we can bring to back to the Master Plan Implementation I, Committee. I, I think we put the cart before the horse in a way, the way I'm hearing. I mean, you're, you're talking about a recodification, codification, <clears throat> which is the, uh, the Master Plan has articulated things that are great about this community, things that need to be fixed, things that need to be reinforced. And they went about it our master plan went about it by talking about neighborhoods, didn't it? It said there was a, there was a, a yes. this area, there was a civic area, there was a central development area, which is also called Millbrook sometimes. There was other things that we want to keep the same way they are, but improve them. So there were <clears throat> goals set out by the master plan. The recodification is a tool, a potential way, to deal with those. And I completely agree with Mike's comments that you need we need to know how that's being done in other communities. Mm -hmm. So the, maybe there shouldn't be a recodification. Should, should there be? And in what? how should it be done? Mm -hmm. But then we superimpose from out of left field one of the issues which has to do with mansionization. And a bit of tiptoeing to my mind mm -hmm. around that issue. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a good idea and it's part of the master plan, then own it. And then say, how are you going to do that. Maybe it is through recodification. Instead, we immediately got into the weeds on how you could kind of tweak zoning in order to make it kind of work to make houses small. But then we found out, well, that's too much of a broad brush, of, brush approach. That's not really going to work, so we kind of learned something. But I think we were ahead of ourselves. Obviously, we learned that. Mm -hmm. So I think there are two things that are going on. One is the bigger picture of the method that we go about the zoning change. Is it, how is it done in other communities? Is, is it a good thing to do it that way? Mm -hmm. Do other communities do it on a piecemeal basis <coughs> but have very strong goals that are articulated? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second one is, okay, now we've got a kind of a way to do it. Here's an issue that apparently is very important to the master plan, which is mansionization. Let's a attack it in that context. Mm -hmm. So I think we had a, we had a double whammy against us because we went into detail without a clear goal being articulated. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was the difference of the mixed use. I think you're absolutely right. This time on mixed use, we had our ducks lined up really well on why this was important. Right out of the master plan. Right, right out of the master plan and also here's, here's what it is. Yes, then we got into some specifics, mm -hmm. but people they were concerned about the specifics, but when you put them in the context of what it was we were trying to do and what the why you provided for greater height, but you had step backs and everything, like once you could, once you could put it in the in the context of policy. Right. Here's what we of the mixed goal. Use, of the, the goal. Plan. The goal was to you know um, uh, to develop our commercial uh, to improve to uh, make it more productive exactly. to bring people into the community. All the things that were part of the yeah. clearly articulated. Whereas when we tried to attack. Mansionization. We even that I, sh I didn't even want to use the word, so we didn't really have a clear goal. Because mm -hmm. I think I found out that in some cases we want to let houses maybe get bigger. In some houses we don't. I'm not sure now. So we we kind of learned. Mm -hmm. So we have to get that goal very clear. Mm -hmm. But if and I'm hearing two things again. Recodification is a saying we're, our tools aren't right for a number of things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And we ought to articulate all those things. Sizing of mansions, dimensionization is only one of those things. Right. 
Definitely. Yeah, that, that was only, that's, that was not everything. That is one piece, right. one subset of many other things. So, and just since I have a list in front of me that Laura put together, I'll read it. So the kinds of things that were talked about um, were reduce the number of uses that require a special permit, mm -hmm. consolidate and refine the business zoning districts, uh, create commercial and industrial design uh, guidelines and incorporate them into the zoning bylaw, amend the zoning bylaw to provide redevelopment incentives in all or selected portions of the business districts, etc. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of other things that are talked about in the master plan that relate to the zoning bylaw that, again, relate back to the master plan goals and strategies. Um, and yes, other communities, when they adopt the master plan, the next step is then looking at the, the what is the what are the policies that need to change or the regulatory process? Um, that's a typical next step um, in a process. And sometimes you could go about that by completely revamping the zoning bylaw or creating lots of overlay districts or you know, patching up one piece at a time. I mean, it, it very much depends upon the community and the process involved in adopting zoning, which of course varies depending upon the type of community your charter. Um, in this community with town meeting, we have a, a very special, we have a unique process and it requires a lot more education, it requires a lot more outreach and buy-in and you know that's a little bit different I would say than some other places, um, but not, not incredibly so. But you know you still need to have that process but the timeline is longer so we need to make it very intentional um, and we want you know people to understand what's happening, you know to your point, the how and the why. Mm -hmm. yep. So, and the impact, um, and having the understanding of, you know, why are we doing this? Are there other communities that have done something similar? What were the outcomes, etc.? So, all of that stuff would be part of that scope that I was talking about of what exactly are we doing here? What are the goals of this process? Do we want to get at addressing many of these issues? Some of these issues, you know, sort of just cleaning it up, having the zoning bylaw make sense, you know, and making sure that it's clearly communicated to the people who need to use it the most. Um, which is, you know, a combination of our customers, uh, the developers, uh, development community, the building inspection office, yeah. the planning department, residents, everybody. You know, we all need to understand what it means. And if we can't read it, or there's contradictions in it, then we, you know, I think that that's a clear indicator that, and, and that's pointed out, frankly, in the zoning audit, and that's something we should probably address. Um, then everything else is kind of, you know, part two which is, do we want to get to policy issues? Do we want to get to you know, some of the other bigger you know, goals that we're probably very passionate about, other than commercial districts and things of that nature? There are a lot of things, in other words, like Millbrook, for example, you mentioned that. So one is just a system kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's just a tool making it work better for you, for the whole approval system. For all the users, yeah. And the other is a series of goals that would be That's right. brought to bear. Mm -hmm. So I, I think sort through those in a bigger, bigger picture way. Right. But back to Andrew's point, I think, which is um, the timeline, or Ken, actually, you, you noted this, which is the timeline is very tight. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, I, this is my understanding, I wasn't here, but you know, you adopted the master plan and then it took a while to appoint the master plan implementation committee. Um, there was a gap of time, you know, and you had probably roughly, I would guess, six months, maybe less, to develop those zoning recommendations. Or even less. Maybe less, less right? Four months, because you to the right. warrant is right. January. In like October, yeah, two, three, three, four, three, months, January. three months. Yeah, two, two and a half months. So we, we don't want to start this in September, or October, yeah. for that matter. We want to start soon. Although yes. I will say, from, from my perspective, mm -hmm. the, I'm more interested in how we want to tackle it mm -hmm. than the timing of it. Yeah. I mean, if if what we were talking about was something a little bit grander, mm -hmm. um, if you will, um, and we need money and we right. need time and that. I think all of that is actually fairly easily explained. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have exactly what it is mm -hmm. that the that the project is mm -hmm. right, and I, I don't think. So, so I think that's the big question for us sooner rather than later is how much are we going to tackle exactly. and in, in, in what, in what uh, order. So. Yep. And so that's the idea of the Master Plan Implementation Committee meeting on May 26th Great. is to get at this issue and to also understand how we need to be responsive to the Article 11, 11 resolution. So. <coughs> Central school. So I, I realized
surprised after putting this on here. I, the, the RFP is still open, so <laughs> the bids are due actually on uh, Monday, May 23rd. Okay. So I, I don't actually have much of an update. We had a walkthrough uh, last two weeks ago now, actually, May 5th, um, and have had a number of people and organizations who are interested, including town departments. Okay. Um, so there's, you know, that, that it's still in process. So nothing is definitive at this point in time. But I, what I wanted to ask is if any one of you would want to be want to participate in the review of the proposals because I have not asked that previously. Once we receive them, to uh, evaluate the proposals against the criteria and make a decision or help with a decision. Any volunteers? <laughs> I don't think I know enough about the central school. I didn't, I didn't know if this was your uh, agenda. I did it last time, so I can yeah. kind of recommend okay. to it. Yeah. But I, I just was you, you may sensitive to your time. time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, if you want to help, I would yeah. help. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I just are, don't know enough about it yeah. to say. I'll, I'll do um, it. You're on the feasibility yes. committee for the senior center? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it would make sense for you to continue, but if you can't be there, maybe an alternate? I can help. Okay. okay. Perfect. I just don't know enough about that. And I can yeah. help you to get up to speed. Okay. Of yeah. course. Or if anybody else I'm thinking could okay. probably help as well. Yeah. yeah. Having, yeah. having the experience of the building. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, meeting minutes from the 25th. I didn't have an issue with these. Yep. Nope. I can. Uh, uh, motion? Yeah, I was looking at that. Make the motion to approve, uh, but do both at the same time? Or uh, well, I think Andy wasn't at the first one and I wasn't at the second, so we probably should separate the two of them. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Motion to approve the minutes uh, of April 25th, 2016. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I guess that's the one I abstained. Because yeah, I Andy abstained from that one. I approved the uh, meeting minutes from May 2nd. 2016. I get email already, so I read more. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm a specific yeah. Okay. Anything else we have not discussed? Anyone want to bring up? Uh, when's next meeting? June 6th. Oh. June 6th? Yes, June 6th. we have two weeks left. You're granted a break. That's right. Memorial Day. <laughs> okay. Do we have anything on the docket for June 6th? We do, yes. We will have a special permit uh, hearing for the, I'm always forgetting them. It's Learn to Grow, but they're the called uh, the Springboard Schools. Yes. And there may be another one as well. And the Housing Production Plan. And the Housing oh, Production Plan. So that actually right. could be a good That's very important. discussion of this. Because okay. consultants are coming. And the plan needs to be adopted by this board as well as the Board of Selectmen. And you'd so. expect that that night? It, up to you. Okay. If you're comfortable, okay. yes, but doesn't have to be. Can we, we have... get a preview of that then? Or? Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, it should we'll be up this week and then it'll be final Monday night. -ish, yes. Final ish. The committee, the advisory committee is going to review it next Monday and make changes and then so there'll be one more revision. Mm -hmm. It's long, it's very long, but you know, uh, you can focus on what interests you most, but you know, you can go, you can focus more on the strategies, the goals and the strategies. The pictures? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we like pictures. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, move to uh, to adjourn and reconvene. Well, are we reconvening? Or am I the only one reconvening? I think you're, I think you're the only one. Not yeah, so I don't think we're going to reconvene. I think we're only going to adjourn. Uh, so I make a, a, a move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.